So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we could make a sequel to that Percy Jackson movie we made, you know, based on those super popular books. Oh, yeah, that was moderately successful. Yeah, so, I mean, there's still a tiny little bit of hope that we could turn this into our own Harry Potter type situation. I like the sound of that. Now, critics and fans did not like our first movie, though, so we're gonna have to step things up quality-wise for sure. Oh, oh. Oh, or not. Or we could just do the opposite of what I just said. Yeah, that sounds a lot easier, sir. I mean, name recognition should do most of the heavy lifting when making a franchise. That's a good point. Why even get quality involved? So what happens in this one? Well, Percy Jackson's father, you know, Poseidon, he's ignoring him. He's not even responding to him anymore. Oh, what's that about? Oh, I'll never tell. What? Seriously? Yeah, I'm gonna introduce that and then not explain it ever. Oh, okay. And then Percy's brother shows up to Camp Half-Blood. Oh, he has a brother? He does. His name is Tyson, and he's a Cyclops, which means he's also a son of Poseidon. So why did he show up to camp? So he can be in the movie. Oh, neat. And he's gonna put on these big sunglasses, because, you know, his one eye is kind of weird for people to look at. Wouldn't the middle of the sunglasses be right in front of his eyeball, making it impossible for him to see? Oh, absolutely. But this way we'll save money on our VFX budget. Oh, yeah, okay, very smart. And so then we're also gonna find out that, you know, Luke, the bad guy from the last movie? Yeah. Turns out he didn't die at the end of the last movie. He's completely fine. Oh, how did he survive? By not dying. That'll do it. And so he poisoned this tree that protects Camp Half-Blood with like a barrier, right? So the good guys need to go get this magical fleece that can heal anything. Okay. But Luke also wants the fleece because he wants to revive his great-grandfather Kronos, who was like known for eating his own children. Okay, right. So it feels like if he does that, Kronos is gonna eat him. No. But maybe that won't happen. It's just, you told me like two things about the situation. Kronos eats his own children, and Luke is the child of his child's child. Yeah, so anyway, Kronos would, like, annihilate the Olympians, right? So the good guys need to get this fleece before Luke, because everything is at stake here. Wow, yeah, sounds important. It is. So they send two people. What? Yeah, well, it's like a one person plus one sidekick situation at camp, so. But everything is at stake. Yeah, so they send this one girl, Clarice, and also a satyr, and then I guess everyone just kind of hangs out and hopes to not be annihilated. Wow, well, interesting strategy, I guess. But Percy and his friends, they go anyway, because there's this prophecy. Prophecy? Yeah, sure. Okay, got it. Do you want to hear what the prophecy is? Is it that, like, he's destined to save the day or something? More or less, yeah. Then yeah, no, I got it. Well, okay then. So they get in this magical taxi cab, right, where the cab drivers give them, like, a cryptic part of the prophecy. Do you want to hear it? Um, it's a prophecy in a YA movie. I get it. That's fair. So then these cab drivers realize they don't have any money, so they kick them out of the cab in Washington D.C., which is not where they wanted to go. Okay. And then Percy's friend Grover, he's gonna get kidnapped by Luke, who has, like, this teleportation device. Oh, no, so I guess he takes him right to where the fleece is, huh? No, he takes him to a boat, and that's how they're gonna get there. Why not use the teleportation device to go all the way, or at least much closer? Because then the movie would end super quickly, so they're gonna travel by water, which is the thing that the hero of this movie can control. That makes sense. So then Percy and his friends decide to go see Luke's father, Hermes. And where's he located? Washington. Washington, D.C. Wow, well, thank God the taxi cab randomly dropped them off there. Yeah, pretty crazy coincidence that that would happen, right? I mean, what are the odds? You couldn't write something like that. But you did, though. I did, yeah, I did write that. So what's this guy's deal? Well, it seems like he's working at the front desk of a UPS store, but then we realize that he's running this massive shipping operation with hundreds of employees. What? So why is he dealing with customers at the front? So we can have a fun little reveal moment. Yeah, but that's like Jeff Bezos working the phones at Amazon Tech Support. Yeah, but but maybe one or two people in the audience will laugh, so it's worth it not making any sense. That's fair. So then Hermes gives them the exact two items they're gonna end up needing just a couple of scenes later, and then we never see him again. Oh, very considerate of him. So they end up going to Luke's boat, but they get put in a cell pretty quick. Unsupervised and unguarded, I imagine? Of course. So then Percy uses his water powers to rock the boat so they can reach their backpack, which was left right outside their cells. Oh man, bad guys are terrible at taking prisoners. They sure are, sir. So then there's gonna be this funny moment where Tyson gets seasick because the boat was rocking. Isn't he the son of Poseidon? Why would the sea make him sick? It doesn't make a lot of sense, sir, but maybe one or two people will 
will laugh, so. Gotcha, get that logic out of here. And so then they use this magical packing tape that Hermes gave them, which has the power to make an instant hole. Oh, instant holes are tight. Oh, very gross sounding, sir. So then Percy makes this big wave that he escapes on, and Luke follows him on the wave for a bit, but he ends up falling. Well, water control is Percy's power. How did Luke follow him on a wave? Unclear, so eventually they end up getting the fleece, but Luke catches up with them and steals it. Oh, very mean. Yeah, and he puts it on Kronos' sarcophagus, which wakes him up, and you know what he does? He eats Luke. He eats Luke. Yeah, because that's the thing you said he was known for doing. Yeah, big plot twist that I fully telegraphed. Also, Kronos eats Percy's friend Grover. Oh, no. Yeah, and this guy is made of, like, lava or something, so it's pretty serious. Man, so gonna be pretty tough for Percy to beat this guy, huh? Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, it turns out this sword that Percy was given in the last movie, that's part of the prophecy, and that cuts through this guy like butter. Wow, well, thank God that the thing that was handed to the hero through no effort or merit of his own was the only thing that could save the day in this situation. Yeah, it worked out great. So then Grover and Luke fall out of Kronos' stomach. Are they okay? Yeah, no, they're perfectly fine, because being eaten by a monster made of lava isn't anything to worry about, you know? Well, so nothing about that situation was ever really dangerous, was it? And so now the good guys have the fleece that heals anything, but then Annabeth gets stabbed by a monster. Oh. So. so it's gonna be like, oh my god, what are the good guys gonna do now? I mean, I imagine they use the fleece that heals everything. So then they use the fleece that heals everything and Annabeth is totally fine. Yeah. I mean, was that supposed to be a tense situation, or what What was that? Yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of doing stuff here. Well, okay then. So what do you think? Well, I mean, it sounds like a movie, you know? So I imagine this is a lot more faithful to the books than the first movie was. Oh, God, no. Oh, okay. Is that all right? Uh, I mean, listen, I'm sure it's not a huge deal. Uh, okay, good. Me too. And you know, if people don't like it, this will be a great cautionary tale for the next time we take a swing at this property. What? Hey everybody, Ryan here. Hope you enjoyed that video. And if you liked it, feel free to click the like button and the subscribe button and all, you know, buttons of that nature. There are also like hundreds of other episodes on the channel that you can check out if you want. Also leave a comment down below letting me know what other movies you want to see pitches for. And check back soon for a new one, because there's going to be new ones, you know? Okay, bye.